Okay. The agreement was that he'd be allowed to live and his family would be allowed to live if they, the sons would take up, if the, this is what's so crazy. If the sons would, would rebuild the new world. Yeah. Talk about a task. Yeah. If they would rebuild the entire new world, they, but they would have to adhere to like very specific things. And what it meant was... Who are they going to they, procreate with though? They're, they had their sons and then there were pockets of humans around the world. Okay. They don't, so it's not like that to like... There's get, definitely get other people. Sisters or anything. But when they meant no man should survive, I think Enlo was talking about his bloodline. They're these demigod type of bloodlines. I don't think it related to every human being on the planet. Okay. Just to be clear. Okay. So they made an agreement that the sons would go to different parts of the earth. That's what they said. It was like, you need to go to these different places and create civilizations then. But what they must have, and this is a bit of speculation on my point, they must have decided to just do it differently. Because all of a sudden, for the first time, we see the rise of megaliths. Before, to be clear, these structures in Mesopotamia, in Iraq, these cities, they had specifically wanted them to use brick. They, for some reason, energetically, they, they really preferred brick, but brick doesn't last. Maybe they didn't care about that back then. I don't know. But they, they initially had built everything in brick. And then all of a sudden, after this event, we see the rise of megaliths with stone out of nowhere. And that's the whole point. So they, they state to them, you need to go to different parts of the world and create different civilizations, but some have to be on like so the domain of Enlil or Enki. That's the way mm -hmm. to describe it. Like, for instance, we find the same gods shared throughout Turkey and Greece as this area showing it was almost like en Enlil's domain, if I, can, if I can make it clear about that. Whereas we see another group that just diverged and went down to Egypt and then down through Mediterranean that seems to have created Atlantis. So there mm. seems to be two super civilizations that emerged at the height of both groups leaving, which was it, the Athenians and the Atlanteans. But how do we get there? And that's where I'm going to take you right now, is I have genetic proof about that as well as archaeological proof to show that this entire story comes from somewhere, okay? Let's see it. So at Lake Vaughan, I was studying Zernaki Tepe and then Cavus Tepe came up. Now, if you remember where we left off on Cavus Tepe, there's a king list that was found at Cavus Tepe that talked about how the king was known as King Hake. And that in, at, in, in the bloodlines, that's very well easy to find for King Hake, that he was a direct descendant, and he talked about it too, he was very proud. He was a direct descendant of Japheth. And now we know from these ancient bloodlines that Japheth was a son of Noah. Yes. And what was the other name again? Zayasudra. Zayasudra. So it like exactly mirrors supposedly that story, but, but we have the evidence to now back it up. Now I want to take it to another step. In 2017, this is a discovery that no, I don't, I don't believe anybody knows about this. Even Ben. I'll put this in the corner of the screen. He, even Ben. Well, he knows now. Yeah. There was a site, and I stumbled across this by accident, just literally by like searching f for um, structures. And also, um, there was a group that visited that site that took a couple pictures. But if you look at it, there's no excavations that are being done at all. Uh huh. Okay. So the first thing to note about this is the name. It's called Kef Kalesi. And instead God, of all the names are so cool. Yeah. Well, Kel, uh, Kef Kalesi. So if you remember from Game of Thrones, her name is Kalesi. Yes. It means castle. Yes. Okay. Her, it's, it means castle. So. I don't even watch Game of Thrones, but I knew that. Kef Kalesi <laughs> may be the most important of all these sites. And why it's important is that not only did they find these basalt megaliths that look just like Cavus Tepe, you see that? On top of the mountain. Yes. But. They're strewn everywhere, like a catastrophe just threw them all over the place. Now, remember when you asked, look at Cavus Tepe. Remember when you asked why there's primitive work underneath it? I have it right here. Yeah. Because they found the stones strewn everywhere and just put them back together like, like a jigsaw puzzle. But they did it like but they can't one, one after the other. But they can't recreate them. Wait, who? The who Eurasians. The Eurasian civilization that is credited as being the ones that built this. So who found them? 
the Eurasian civilization thousands and oh, thousands. Oh, the ones who rebuilt it. Yes. I'm sorry, the ones who rebuilt it. When you said built it, I'm, yeah, like, that's what I'm I mean. thinking the original. So they went back to these sites, they knew how sacred they were, and then they built right on top of them. And then they were destroyed later too. Bravo, okay. They, then they disappeared, but more more through Got war it. and different means like that. But okay, so in in Kefkalesi, not only do you have these incredibly precise blocks like we see in Kavistepi on this mountaintop, which by the by by the way is below a massive volcano called Sufan Dagi, that's thirteen thousand feet high. But they um, they found ruins of the city of the civilization underwater in Lake Vaughan. Do you see that in the image? Yes. This is where it gets wild. They determined that in geologically, when they looked at the lake levels, that the last time the lake was low enough to be able to build on the bottom of, remember that lake is, is 1,500 feet deep. It's yeah. not on the bottom bottom, but I mean, it's, it's on like down, right? So this isn't, but it's on the bottom wherever it is, but this isn't necessarily at the 1,500 feet. No, 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 no. But it's right below the ruins on the mountain that you just saw. How okay? far deep, just for an idea, how deep is this? Over 50 feet deep. That's not that. I mean, yes, deep, but, but it's not yes, that but they deep. built a civilization there. Yeah. Now in Lake Titicaca in Bolivia, we see the same thing. We see ruins underwater there when the lake was at a completely different time period. Now, when geologists studied ice, they took cores of the sediments in the bottom of Lake Vaughan, and they studied it because it's one of the oldest lakes on Earth. They found that the last time the lake, and, and they admitted they're perplexed about the ruins, they, and even in the articles, they, wrote, they mentioned that they were perplexed at the ruins because they're underwater. They mentioned in an, a separate study that the, that, in, that the lake was last low enough or at, at its lowest maximum 15,000 years ago. So now that's older than Gobekli Tepe. And it means that those ruins, those ruins of Kefkalesi are at least 15,000 years, at least. And they're such, they're intact. It's great. It's the same, it's the megalithic blocks just like above the ground. So now, now we're going to, we're going to even add another layer to it. Who's this guy? Is this the dude who found it, or is that so just this, a random scuba? That's an archaeologist holding an artifact from that site. Oh, he's holding something Yeah, there. in his finger, in his hand. Yeah, I can't see shit. <laughs> okay, so, look, look you, got the, you got the megaliths on top of the mountain, you got the megaliths under the water, right? And you got this. Another one for the corner of the screen? It was a giant box with incredibly precise carving. This is above ground. That was found... Found above ground. I... It was like... Oh, you know where that was found? There's a there's a city that's... There's a town right in between the mount and the lake that they found it in... And when they were excavating in like an old school, they found it in the bottom of like ancient ruins below the city, below the town. So back to so your... So Kefkalesi area though. Back to your original potential like tsunami thing. Yeah. It's making a lot of sense. I know. And yeah. so... They find this gigantic relief box, okay? And what it, this is, I mean, dude, talk about tying things together. It has the same depictions as the Anuna. It has the yeah. same type of the handing wings. the pine cone down. Yep. It has the wings. Holy shit. Then guess what? You learn the god name is God Haldi. It's, it's the same as Enlil. Are those eagles up there? Yes. Too? Son of a bitch. It's Enlil. Why are they standing on the little lion's? Because Enlil's two symbols were the lion and the eagle. What about what about the serpent? That was Enki. That was his rival. Remember? Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm trying to keep it. Yeah, that's fine. Everyone else, I'm just looking closely at this down here. So okay. that gall, that god, god name of them that's depicted in that, his name is Haldi. Now, sorry, but I, I just don't think that. Let me see. Yeah, that's the tree of life in the center. It's the same yeah. thing. It's the same thing. Oh my god! It's the exact same thing. I don't believe that that's an archetype of nature. I really believe in English archetype of nature. That is a real being. That's what we've been talking about from the very beginning. Is that the end? That's it's an actual Anuna from Sumer that are the same oh, ones okay. that Super are ruling and creating civilization and all this stuff. Those conversations on the mountain, it's they're real, and that's Haldi and that's Enlil, and so. Clearly, he's the one who got the domain of Lake Vaughn. Clearly, right? It must have been the agreement. Because then you can trace it, and we're going to trace it back to Greece with the ancient Athenian civilization, okay? Oh my God. Now, before we... Um, this is... this is. I just want to say, this is absurd. This is it's like... It's like too good, right? This is just... 
you know, you, Matt, even if you're like 30% right about stuff, it's mind blowing. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.